Baba Manto Vekabelate. This is everybody's day. This is everybody's day. Why is this significant to my subject tonight? It's because in your work with God, you must be sensitive to changing time frames. And the key to understand that a time frame is about to shift is that you ask God to reveal to you the tokens, the signs of a beginning. Are you with me? When you boil water, I don't know if you noticed, if you boil water in a pot, for example, when the water boils, if you are not present, you could keep wasting your fuel. And so, new boiling kettles, whether electric or gas-seated kettles, have been infused with an alarm system. Are you with me? So that when it, might, it might come as a whistle. It might come as a long hiss. Those things are supposed to indicate that the boiling water has arrived at a point where fuel needs to be cut off from it. Are you with me? As it is in the natural, it also is in the spiritual. And that's why we encourage that your knowledge of God must go beyond just cramming scriptures. It must also go beyond hearsay. Hearsay is the lowest form of knowledge when it comes to spiritual things. And I refer to it as environmental knowledge. It's the lowest form because it is the most susceptible to error. You can meet people who have come to define God because of their experiences. They may also have fellowshiped with an inappropriate model or an inappropriate communicator. To be able to void your heart of error, what we now do is to go into scriptures. Because the word of God according to the psalmist has been tried seven times in the fire the word seven there is to depict the perfection of the trials of the word are you with me everything that made its way into our bible has been proven to be true so it's it's beyond everybody's intelligence in case you feel that the words of scriptures are conflicting in expression the posture is to believe that it is you that really does not understand it. It's been proven beyond doubt that everything that is captured in our Bible represents God's perspective over situations. But the psalmist introduces to us another layer of experience. He says, The entrance of thy word, it giveth light and understanding to the simple the word simple is actually a, a, a it's 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 in a bit to give the soft landing to an ignorant person so the word simple there is not a non-complex person is actually like a foolish person someone who is bereft of wisdom the entrance of thy word and i've said to us that in its original meanings what it defines is that every verse of scripture is shaped in the similitude of a gate as you begin to look into the word of god what happens to you is that you are granted access into the life behind the word when you come into that life your life human life is implicated with light and you are gifted understanding it is by the 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 combination of the possessions of life and understanding or sorry light and understanding that you will exit simplicity i have seen professors who beat their wives i have seen professors who don't take good care of their children i have seen professors who are married who are fathers but have not been able to lay hold on the template of true fatherhood because if you don't know god as father you can't father accurately are you with me so natural learning is not an advantage the wisdom for living is kept behind scriptures 
And so the scriptures need to be assessed as gates. So if you found out that there's an area of foolishness in your life, the time, the time is actually saying to you that you should begin to engage the word of God because the word of God gives you doctrinal knowledge. That's that which comes from teachings. But behind doctrinal knowledge is what we call spiritual knowledge. There are knowings that come by experiences, not by reading. Is somebody with me? Am I sounding mystical? So I share with my wife, read your Bible, read your Bible. Just read, read, read. But as you read, watch out for your signs. I cannot overemphasize the important, importance rather of signs. Because the, one of the proofs that you have now entered into a robust fellowship with the Holy Spirit is that he begins to use unconventional means of communication to get your attention. We are all Africans. And so we understand that beyond speech in the domestic environment, there are also facial communications. The head doesn't need to move. It may be a blink or two. And you understand that life is going to become difficult after that blink. Am I right? You may be seeking approval and there's a third person who is waiting for your mom to maybe an auntie comes and says I want him to come and spend weekend with me and your mom really doesn't like the auntie but is trying to mask her disgust and then she now, you now say mommy auntie says I should if she says no warfare will break out in the home front sometimes they even say you can go the difference between you can go and you can go may just be a gesticulation. You want to follow her? Say yes, you really want to follow her? You know, those, those movements of the head, they are part of communication. We call them non-cognitive communications. It means if you are not initiated into that fellowship, you cannot know what is meant. Unfortunately for the believer, the Holy Spirit uses more non-cognitive communications than speech. It means the average believer lives his life in a wilderness. He keeps asking God to answer questions that he has answered long ago. That's why we must give attention to the things that bring us into that ecosystem where those things can be learned. You can't you can want to know those things and not be a creature of prayer. Because in prayer, you'll be educated. As you study the word, you'll be educated. We must also learn the mystery of solitude. The average believer is too busy to know him. He called them a new uh, some modern more modern translations we use the word he ordained the 12 it means th their their call was by appointment that they should be with him and that he might send him we have found out by simple research that the average person who wants to represent jesus does not know him and it's not because he remains a mystery it's because we have not paid the price of being with him. Can you whisper to your neighbor, it is time to stay. What's the subject for the night? Not this season. This is not the season to be everywhere. In the day that Abraham, that Moses was going to see him, Moses first was isolated. He now chose a location for Moses. He said, I will place you on the cleft of the rock. I will pass before you. In passing before you, there will be a declaration. I will declare all of my goodness. Sorry, I will cause my good, all my goodness to pass before you. And I will declare all of my name. That's how Moses came into a knowing. Many of the knowings that impact generations 
come in isolated seasons. If you are too public, you will be a stranger. And if your destiny is cheap, you may not need to know him too well. But if you really want to be iconic, you want people to wake up every day and say, oh, thank you, Lord, for this person. You will need to master the mystery of isolation. I was just telling Pastor Timothy, as we're coming this afternoon, I said many times when I go on my trips, I don't do counselings. Except it's another public meeting. Once I get into my room, people say, oh, you are not at home, so now I can chat with you. No, no, no. I use those isolated times to find my bearing in the Lord. May the wisdom for the season be imparted tonight in the name of Jesus. Okay. When we continue studying Genesis chapter 1, bless you, where's my phone? Keep it with you. Just hold it. You know the password of the phone. Okay. So, okay, it's even off. Okay. So, write it somewhere so that in case it locks. Genesis chapter 1 also reveals a few other things to us. It reveals to us that in trying to create the balance for life in the earth space, God decided to, to bring in a few pillars. I would, if God gives us time, I will be more, not more mystical, but by the time we come and fully start to use the ark next year, I will need to cover a lot of distance. We've done a lot of foundational stuff. And so, when we get there, one of the things we do is to create a foundational class. If I'm around, I may take some of the classes so that we can have people off meeting days to catch up. And then, because the demands on us are, are more. I don't mean just as a ministry. The demands on your life. And you can't use your six years just knowing foundations. Are you with me? The earth's balance for existence, for life, is designed to be supported by certain pillars. They are, they, we call them structures or balance. What we are studying is just one of them. I'm also saying this because I know that this kind of utterances can impart with a lens. God in scripture says the obvious, but we understand that he's a God that hides himself. Are you with me? So it means when you look at scriptures, it is not all that is first visible that is meant. Have you heard the concept of reading between the lines? That's how the Bible is written. That which is written is sufficient for existence, but that which is written on a second, um, on a secondary note, is written as an invitation. How much do you want to come into? When you respond to that invitation, you find out that Genesis and Galatians chapter and the book of Galatians are not conflicting. It is in reading between the lines that you find the interwoven nature of scriptures that you don't really need to use your head to explain the word of God. You can use scriptures to interpret scriptures because what God is saying in one place is what he's saying everywhere. Are you with me? So in Genesis chapter 1, God was like a construction worker. And the things that he incepted were very strategic. Things that we must know if we create balance around our lives. I did a little list here in no particular order. But when it's time to study it, we'll study them. 
If you look into the book of Genesis, you'll find out that one of the pillars God is setting.